Okay, so uh, in this video, I want to show you how to essentially um, create a vehicle base, which you can then create the rest of the vehicle from, because usually getting something complicated is, is what you, people usually struggle with. Now, I'm not a vehicle artist, um, but for what some of my students want to use this for, they just want to have kind of a nice exterior. It's almost like a prop. They're making like a vehicle prop that's going to go in the scene or it's going to be moving in a very like quite far away or isn't actually supposed to have too much detail. It's not supposed to be a proper vehicle. We're not working on a racing game or anything like that. Um, so I wanted to show people how to do that. So this is kind of the result that I'm going to get to um, in this tutorial. So as you can see, it's a nice, interesting kind of finish. Um, let's turn on perspective so it looks even more dynamic. Wow. Right. So very basic, um, very basic in, in a lot of ways. But in essence, it, it's got quite a lot of stuff in there as well. It's got a lot of like surface swoops and details and extra stuff and um, also, like like I said, I'm not a vehicle artist. This isn't a project that I am spent a lot of time in. Everything took me about one hour uh, or thereabouts, maybe even a little bit less. So not too much time put into this, not too much research, not too much anything. Um, that's my way of saying please do better than this <laughs> if you're going to use these, these techniques. Uh, but I want to show you as well that, you know, we've got uh, we've got live booleans that we're using for these wheels and we've got, um, you know, different poly groups, which is different colors that separate the sections of the model. And we have creasing as well, which decides where we have sharp edges. And also, if I go down here and I turn off my dynamic subdivisions, you see that uh, our actual mesh is quite a lot rougher. Uh, than our smoothed versions, which we are going to uh, preview. Um, and this isn't like confirmed or anything. So I'm gonna take it a little bit further than this in this tutorial, but for now we're just gonna leave this in the background here um, as kind of something we can look at. Um, now let's go back, because I didn't start in ZBrush, actually, I started in Maya. And the card that I'm actually looking at is the LF Electric or something. Um, I don't actually remember LF Electrified. It was LF30, I think. That's what it was called, I think. I don't remember. I just looked it up. Yeah, it's the LF30 Electrified. I don't know if this is a real car. <laughs> I'm not a big car nerd. Um, uh, I don't know if it's a real car or not. But um, that's what I was using, and I had two references. I had this side reference, and I had this perspective reference as well. I'm not even... I'm pretty sure it's the same car. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same car. It might not be, to be honest. Um, regardless, this is kind of what I made before going into uh, ZBrush. So let's get to this point again. I'm going to hide that. Let's. All I did was create a cube, okay? And I'm going to look at it from the side. And I'm going to generally just get the right size for this cube. So first, we're just going to get we're going to get the right length. So I'm going to move this to the front here, move this all the way to the back, and then I'm going to get this to about the bottom here and this to about the top area there. Now, this is uh, not the right size and width. I don't actually know what the width is because I couldn't get a picture from the top, so I'm going to guess it's about somewhere here. Um, not a good idea to guess. In fact, I'm just going to check. Eh, yeah, it was about there really, pretty much. Uh, let's go back here. Oh, let me also turn on my show uh, show off so you can see what buttons I'm going to be clicking. Oh, sorry, just clicking my hands here. Um, right, so um, I got this in the right size, bottom to top, side to side, and now I've also made sure it's pointing to the front so that I can turn on my world X symmetry and uh, be able to select both sides at the same time. Uh, now we're going to go in here to our, um, we can use our cutting tool here, and I'm going to hold control, and I'm going to add uh, loops going down it. So I'm going to read it from the top, and I'm just going to find the points where we're going to make angles for this car. So the very first point is going to be here, 
And then I think for this particular design, I had another one here, here, um, here, and here. And I'm going to start from the top. So I'm going to move these things so they're in position. And I actually, I'm, I'm keeping it very simple right now. I could add more detail later. I'm keeping it quite simple. Have this come down a little bit. And then we're going to move this down and also match this here. Right. After that, we want to do the bottom, which we can start from this area. And this here I'm going to leave for the moment. I'm just going to match these ones for now. And this one I'm going to put about maybe here or here. Let's leave it there. Uh, these ones we can match pretty fairly well. I'm going to actually just grab all of them and move them up like this. And then I'm going to move them along a little so they match this line as well. So we just want to make sure that all of our, all of our lines are evening it out from top to bottom and all the way around. We can add some in between here. So I'm actually going to add one uh, here for this line. It's going to go up like this. And I think I'm going to add another one. I think I'll leave it actually. I'll leave it at this point. Let's just look at it from above, make sure everything's okay. It does look a little bit wide to me, actually, so I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. Uh, and I'll look at it from the side again, and I want to add one in the middle, right about here. So you can see that we're starting to get an interesting um, curve that follows all the way through the vehicle like this. All the way through like that. Uh, this I'm going to move in. And this I'm going to leave where it is. This isn't too much of a problem. I'm just going to position them so we get a nice little swoop. And in fact, this I'm going to move so that we still get a nice swoop like this. Over here, like this. Okay, nice swoop like that. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab these top layers. And I'm going to move them in. I'm going to move them in like this. Now we're going to get this kind of closing in. And these bottom ones, actually, I'm going to move in a little bit, not too much, uh, as well, a little bit like this. So now we have this, this kind of middling point here. Um, some of these might be moved a little too much. So for example, these ones we want to keep a little bit more stretched, uh, all the way down to about here. This should be OK. And this back one can move in quite a lot. Oops. And this one as well, we want to move in quite a lot. We want this taper quite well. This area as well, we're going to move it in like that. Now let's look at the top. And now I can bring out this reference and I can start looking at the top. So this is going to taper up to about, uh, actually, yeah, up to about here. And then this can start going in again quite directly about here and then these things are going to continue inwards like this I'm gonna add something like that these things we want to pull in as well and we want to start getting something like this okay this one as well I think I'm gonna pull in just a little bit and take a look, make sure everything's okay. All right, so now what I want to do, um, yeah, you can see it's a little bit wobbly. I'm rushing for a little bit. I don't like this area, but I'm going to keep it for now. It's not about um, the quality of the of the card that I'm doing. I just want to show you the techniques. This initial stage is a bit, is a bit rough in my hands as well, um, but bear with me until we get to the Z brush stage. Okay, so now we want to add essentially the side window here. So I'm going to look at it from the side again. I'm going to grab the cutting tool and I'm going to start all the way from here and just cut out the window. I'm going to leave the little point here. I'm going to go back and back to the top like this. 
um, and you can bring them together here. Actually, what we want to do first, we want to connect the line at the top here so that now we can go like this and go back to here, just like that. And I think there's nothing to clean up here. Here, we have to clean this up because this is a mess. Um, but I think I might just I might just do this because I don't want to I don't want to fiddle with it too much. I'm just gonna do that, uh, and I'm gonna get rid of this as well. Actually, I'll just keep it like that, and this is gonna go all the way around like that. Okay, that's great. Um, I might even be tempted because we don't need to match it perfectly. We're just using it as a base. We're making a science fiction car. It doesn't have to be perfecto. Um, but I think I'm gonna do this pull this up here, just so we get that rounded shape much more easily. Um, and now I'm going to pull this all the way down to here. And I'm going to pull this round here, like that. And we should put in a line in between these. So let's put in, let's actually put on a line here and put on a line here. And then we want this to connect to this one. And now we have all of this to play with as well. So we can move this out. These ones we're going to move in a moment. But we want this to match quite nicely. So now we have the doors as well. Just going to make sure. Make sure these are matching each other. They don't seem to be. So now we have all the doors outlined as well. We have the window outlined. We're just going to do the, the top part in a second. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to make sure that stuff on here is working okay. Uh, how much detail do I want to put into this? I put in a little bit more. Like this. Pull this down here. Like that. Uh, here, this is okay. Here, we need to connect this. We need to fix this. Because this isn't going okay. We could fix it better. Uh, but again, this is just a base that we're going to... Uh, take to ZBrush. It's not going to be our final model by any chance, uh, so don't worry about that. That's why I'm not too worried about what's happening with this topology. Um, one more thing though I want to do before we move on is I'm going to grab these and I'm going to extrude. And actually before I do that, I made a mistake last time, which I, which I don't want to repeat this time. First of all, let me uh, harden this, soften this means I can move these down a little bit um, and also I want to insert one of each here and I want to move all of this it's on the side lower down way lower down except for this one we'll compensate there and then this one as well lower down so we get this nice rounded effect and we also want to soften them go now we have this round top layer I'm gonna grab the top layers in make sure it's rounded uh, and this we can move down a little bit These ones, if I wanted to, I could I could do some work on them. I could push them forward or back, whatever design I wanted to make. For now, I'm just going to leave them. Uh, this could actually be sharpened. I'm going to sharpen this. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to grab these, which is going to be the top kind of massive window. And we're just going to extrude it, click, and just make this a little bit smaller here and pull it out a little bit so that we have separation between uh, the window and its frame. And the window, I'm actually gonna pull this back a little bit as well. All right, so now we have a separation between the window and the frame and a separation between this window and its frame as well, which is great. There we go. Now it's looking a bit, it's looking a bit cheap around here and I agree with you. Uh, I'm gonna I want to keep them for now because we're going to adjust it in ZBrush anyway. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with this part too much anymore. But we did add this new section um, that's going to help flatten it out. So we don't need it to be quite that angular. Uh, we can soften it a little bit here, 
and we can kind of play with this if we want to a little bit, play with the roundness. Okay, generally, this, this area looks very messy, but that's normal because this is the, the side doors that we're going to be working on. Okay, and this is pretty much all I did in, in Maya. You know, it doesn't look pretty, it doesn't look good, um, but it is pretty much the same as what I did. This one, I took a little bit more care, <laughs> a little bit more time getting, getting to that stage. Um, it's also a slightly different design than this one. But this is all I did for Maya. So let's take this now into uh, ZBrush. So I'm going to export uh, this as a uh, demo. Uh, also, of course, you don't want to delete all your history, do your save, so it doesn't like uh, lose, your, lose your stuff when it crashes. I'm uh, just going to check the recording is okay. Yeah, just 15 minutes so far. You can tell I'm, <laughs> I'm speeding through this. Uh, and now we have this guy. So I'm going to just uh, hide everything from this. I'm going to turn off Live Boolean. And I'm just going to insert a one of these, put it at the bottom. And I'm going to, actually, let's, let's yeah, I'm going to uh, import our demo here. So this is what we started with, exactly the same. So the first thing I did is I turned on my uh, frame so I can see what's going on here. And I want to separate this into polygroups. So I'm going to go B on my keyboard, then Z. And we want to open a Z model. No, that's this one here, Z modeler. Perfect. Click this one. Now I'm going to, if you haven't used Z modeler before, go do some research. Look at what Z modeler does. Look at how it works. But essentially, uh, it gives you uh, options for what you want to do to either a face, an edge, or a point. Right? And when you hold space over a face, an edge, or a point, it gives you different options. So I'm going to start off by just selecting a point, holding space, and clicking do nothing. Go over an edge, hold space, and click do nothing. And then I'm going to mouse over a face, hold space, and click polygroup, single poly. And if you haven't looked this up again, just go on YouTube, go on Billy Billy or whatever your uh, country's local video site is and just check out a bunch of ways of how you could use this stuff. Um, so essentially, I'm going to hold Alt and select the areas I want to change the polygroup for. And then I'm going to click and I'm going to press Alt one more time and let go of the click. And that's going to let my, oops, that's going to let me draw a different polygroup for that area. Now I'm just going to turn on the symmetry first. Okay, that's all right. Uh, let's do that again. So those are on both sides. Now we're going to check the middle window. Do the same thing. And now we want to grab the side door, which we have here. We'll do the same thing for that too. All right. Anything else we want to grab? Probably the front here, if we want to keep it sharpened. And the rear, if we want to keep that sharpened too. Let's draw a slightly different design to what I did last time. And let's then select our bottom areas here and grab those as well. And I'm going to grab these, grab these, and grab these. Sometimes they'll look like they're very similar colors. They are still with different ID. It's just you need to hit Alt on your keyboard at another time to get a different color if you want it to be visually different. So exactly the same model as we had before, but we've just separated into groups. So why did we separate this into groups? Because down here in our geometry palette, so here's our geometry palette, um, there's a sub palette called uh, dynamic subdiv. So if you've ever pressed D on your keyboard by accident, so I'm gonna press the, the letter D on my keyboard, it's gonna ask me this, do you wanna turn on uh, live subdivisions, I'm going to say uh, yes, and uh, it's going to turn this dynamic subdivisions button on just by pressing D. So if I turn it off, I can press D, it's going to ask me again, and I can press shift D to turn it off. So when we turn this on, it essentially smooths the whole model, right? It, or rather, it shows you what's going to happen when you press divide. So if I turn off dynamic and I click divide, it's going to do the same thing but for real. Now I go back and forth and you can see that we have actual new geometry in there. I don't want to do that. I just want to use dynamic, which is going to show me a preview. It's not real. It's just showing me a preview, right? It's a little easier. Go up another one. Let me just turn off. There we go. Back to normal. 
Um, so it's showing you a preview of when you smooth three times, this is what it's going to look like. And you can turn that on and off very easily. Um, but as you can see, our, our car has turned into a potato, and that's not what we wanted. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go down here into crease, and I'm going to crease this model so that some areas remain sharp even after I turn on dynamic subdivision. Because uh, there, in, your, in your kind of Z modeler palette that I showed you before, let's go over the edge here. Let's go over this little edge. Uh, let's turn off that for a second, go over this edge, hold space, and click crease. So crease does this, I'm going to click, and now this is a little bit highlighted, a little bit highlighted. Let me show you again on the smooth one, I'm going to click, and now this is crease. Now this is what creasing does, it pinches a part of the smooth model, right? And remember, this is still just a preview, but it pinches that part of the smooth model. It's going to retain this edge as it was before it was uh, dynamic, right? Can you see that? So if I click down here as well, you see it's gonna create a curve because it's only keeping these edges straight, so it's gonna smooth them together. And then if I click here, it's gonna keep it clear again. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm essentially creasing the models. Um, uh, this also applies if you are not using dynamic, if you're just gonna divide. So if I crease these, mo these areas here, let me turn this off, and I divide, you can see it's going to retain this edge because I have the crease here, even though I'm actually adding subdivisions. Uh, okay, so now that I essentially explained to you how creasing works, what we're going to do is because we changed our poly groups here, 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 different colors, we're going to go down to um, ba, 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 crease here, and we're going to click crease PG, crease the poly group border. And that's going to automatically put a crease on all of the polygroup borders. And now when I go to dynamic subdiv and I click dynamic, it's going to automatically keep these sharp parts sharp. So our car looks more like what it's supposed to. And I can then increase the division. So right now it's at three, let's put it at four. And you can see how smooth it's going to look once I add those details. Now I'm going to keep it on dynamic and I'm going to do some work on it because when you click dynamic, you don't change the actual resolution of the model. You're just seeing what it's going to look like. It's kind of like uh, helping you know what's going to be after you're done modeling. But I can continue modeling on the low resolution version with the preview turned on, which is what I'm going to do. So here with this Z modeler brush again, I'm going to mouse over the window, which is one color, and I'm going to hold space on the middle face, and I'm going to go to extrude polygroup island and the polygroup island is the group of colors that doesn't touch any other colors so when I do this here it's only gonna do it for this section this is the polygroup island so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this window in a little bit and I'm gonna push this top window in a little bit so that it looks more like the car has uh, separate sections and over here if I wanted to I could also pull this whoops let's turn off our our edge actions. Uh, I'm gonna pull out this car door a little bit as well, but see how it kind of, it bent a little bit? And that's because um, if you look here, yes, the green is sharpened here and it keeps the shape, um, but when I pull it out, this area isn't sharpened. So let's turn off dynamic. You can see it looks exactly how it's supposed to, but when I turn on dynamic, this part is smooth. All we have to do is go in here and put a crease over here. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go here, mouse over, crease edge, make our brush a little smaller, and I'm gonna crease this. And now you're gonna see that it's gonna keep that edge there. Also here, look at this edge here. Let's highlight where the edge will be. Crease. Oops. Come on. Whoops, hold on. There we go. Better to do it when it's in the low resolution version. Uh, and let's crease this area as well here. All these sharp areas we want to keep. What about this? Is this this is better smooth, I think. Uh, but this one I definitely want to keep sharp over here. There we go. And I think this one as well.
Okay, what else do we have here? I want to keep this sharp and we want to keep this sharp as well. Now everything should be all right. Okay, this maybe we don't want to keep sharp here. And uh, this one will keep. All right. So we're getting somewhere. We're getting to kind of a, a shape for this car. Um, I'm wondering whether it would be nice to sharpen these for the door and get it look very sh very like this. Maybe you could try that as a design. Uh, but let's do some other stuff. Let's do some other stuff. Um, now, let me just take a look in <laughs> my previous version, uh, see what I was working on last time I worked on this. Let me turn off this. Um, so the front I didn't do much to. I added this here, which is very easy. I can show you how to do this. And I added these things in the back here, again, very easy. And then um, I can show you how to do a few other things. So let's go back here. So uh, in here, what I did before, uh, I move, I pulled this out a little bit, this area here, pulled it out a little bit. Um, and as, as always, this is ZBrush. You can, you can do a lot of really simple, easy adjustments to the vehicle, uh, which is going to change its design uh, without too much effort. Um, so this is another good thing, reason we can come into ZBrush and just start working in here straight away. Remember, you are limited to your low resolution. So if you wanted to have a little bit more to work with, you can either divide or you can use Zmodeler, go in here, select the edge, hold space, click insert, and I can now insert an edge loop here. So you can do that using the Zmodeler tools as well. So you can adjust exactly what you're doing with your with your, with your thing. Uh, I'm wondering whether, yeah, this is a little, <laughs> this looks a little more realistic. Uh, not too much, at least. I just want to move it back a little. It's a little too sharp. What do we have? Let me use my tablet pen instead of my uh, my mouse. What am I doing? Z brush and a mouse. That's that's awful. Go. Let's flatten these front areas. Looks a bit like a shoe. <laughs> Some vehicle artist out there is gonna be like crying at how poor my vehicle design is. Um, come on, guys! It's only been twenty minutes. You should spend hours on each of these stages in reality. Um, Something else I did, I forgot to show. Uh, I actually made a gap in the bottom for uh, that's gonna make stuff easier on when you're adding your extra details for the bottom area. So all I need to do is uh, go to inset. So what inset does is this. It essentially insets uh, a, skew, uh, uh, a cube. It um, creates another layer of detail. So look at this green stuff. Now it has a square inside it. I'm going to do it to everything I select, so only a single poly. But I'm going to actually mask everything with Alt. So I'm holding Alt and creating a mask. And I'm going to apply it to everything, like this. Uh, and then I'm going to hold uh, Extrude instead of Inset for the whole polygroup island. And push it in, or upwards rather, a little bit. And then we want to just do, let's turn off our thing. Let's do polygroup. There we go. And do another polygroup here. Oops. And I'm going to do... I don't want to crease PG now because I don't want to uh, lose the editing that I did because I edited what is creased and what is not. I'm just going to crease this whole edge loop. I want to crease the front edges here. Just single edges, not the whole complete one. And let's go, there we go. Now we've got this result. Now you're seeing we've got some bumps here. And that's because we have these big breaks. So I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff really easy. I'm gonna collapse them in this direction. I don't know why that stuff is there. Get rid of this, get rid of this. And then I wanna delete these lines as well.
and then we're gonna do nothing. Now when I do it, we don't have that anymore. It's clean, it's ready. So what we did on the side here, um, what I did, I did a similar thing, I did an inset. So I grabbed uh, the inset tool, single poly. I wanted to apply it only to kind of this area and I created a pretty big inset. I think I'm gonna grab the fronts as well actually. We have quite a big inset here. Again, I got these problems here. I don't understand why. I'm going to just get rid of them quickly. Uh, and here as well, we don't need that. We're gonna delete this line, great. And we got this inset, great. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna extrude it inward. So we're gonna grab extrude, polygroup island, and we're going to push it inwards like this. So you can see, if I turn off this, you're gonna see what's gonna happen. It's gonna do this. Really cool, uh, kind of kind of really cool thing. Uh, so then I wanted to actually do this. I wanna come in here and get rid of these. Again, I'm gonna collapse, get rid of all of these. And now you see when I smooth again, it's kind of really uh, <laughs> created a, a gap in here. I wanna fix this a little bit or at least adjust it so I'm actually smoothing it which is very unusual you don't usually smooth when you're doing hard surface stuff like this um, and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a crease for a single edge and I'm gonna crease these let me just turn off do nothing for the uh, for space for an edge we won't crease great and it's crease single edge and I'm gonna crease these ones so they go around like this, the top one as well, and bring it pretty far. Now you can see it's creating this very sharp line. Uh, let me try to grab this one as well. Let's see, the further it goes, the less sense it makes. So I'm gonna keep it there and then grab the inside as well. And then I'm gonna close it off like this which is good because it's gonna actually make a sharp line of it going around. So I kind of don't like how that's done it. There we go, we can do it like that. Uh, and then, it's because it's got this pinch here, doesn't it, from this one. I don't like that. Mm, that works a little better, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll crease that edge just so it creates that line. Though I'm not too happy about it. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, let's do the bottom then here and grab it all the way around so you can see it's gonna do this. And you've got these nice little swoops. Um, not as good as my other one, uh, I gotta say, but you know, 0% planning kind of gets you to this point. 0% uh, planning of the design, that is. <laughs> Don't wanna make myself look bad. Uh, and that's all right, that's okay here. Even if we, yeah, that's okay. Um, there's other things you can do here. For example, I just inserted, you know, uh, an edge here. You can lift stuff up, put stuff down. Um, you can uh, bevel. If I wanted to, I could like insert an edge loop here. Again, oops, that's inset. Excuse me. Insert. I could insert an edge loop here, and you can see like it's not taking it too well. And then I could do extrude. Um, let me do that again. Extrude, and I could literally push it. Whoops. Let's do poly loop. I could do something like this or pull it out or do something like I don't know why you would want to do this but the point is that you can do a lot of details in the high poly now you could just take it this far put it into a substance painter uh, let's do a bevel here put it into substance painter and start adding more details after that fact um, that's up to you let me do complete instead come on uh, it goes all the way around I didn't want that all right, let's do this, and then go the way around, and then we can remove these. Okay, then let it collapse. Get rid of this, get rid of this. It is a little trickier to do certain things like beveling in, uh, in ZBrush, um, but all the other things you can do kind of make up for it a little bit. All right, let's get this stage over with because I'm kind of getting tired of it <laughs> uh, let's do crease uh, edge loop complete and edge loop complete 
And now when we do this, you're going to have a sharp end on the front of this. And remember, you can use creasing to do interesting effects. So for example, if I grab crease, I can uh, make areas appear sharp uh, that usually weren't planned to appear sharp, like this. Um, it really depends on what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it. Do something like that. Uh, I don't know why you would. <laughs> it's better to have a design in mind. All right, let's move on. So I keep saying the same things at this point. Um, now that this is ready, um, we can add the the areas for the inside. So uh, I showed it before. I had these two cylinders here. I'm just gonna duplicate one of them and move them down, so I don't have to just make a new cylinder. But essentially, it's just a normal cylinder. Let me turn off perspective here. It's just a normal cylinder, right? And we're going to place it kind of in place. Um, and we're going to turn its uh, kind of uh, sh its mode from normal to subtractive over here. And now when I turn on live boolean, because I turned its mode from normal to subtractive, it's actually going to preview what it's going to be like when the boolean is applied, which is it's going to remove a section uh, in the shape of the actual... Um, the actual object. So this is a little too big actually because it's cutting in the front area. Move it about here and this is okay. Um, and if I turn on like uh, polyframes, you can see this is actually what it's doing. Very clear. All right, now I'm gonna duplicate it and move it in the rear like this. And again, turn it to subtractive, make it a little bigger because this is a larger area. Move it over here. Um, and I can do something like this. And this, all of this, um, is essentially just kind of playing with this stage. I'm wondering whether I can do a little bit more, kind of, I want to kind of move the bottom areas a little bit for some reason, I don't know. I just kind of want it to be a little more dynamic in its shape. Maybe I should duplicate it first. Yeah, let's duplicate it, hide it so that we don't lose our original. Always a good idea. Move this inwards a little more. And move this out a little more. And these ones are looking okay, but we can also kind of just raise these. Just making stuff up, guys. I'm more of a... But I enjoy the design phase a lot, so I would be playing around with this, seeing what I could make it look like for ages. Um, let me just move these out a little bit more, and then we'll call it done. All right, let's say this is done. Um, what I would do now is I would save. So the first thing I'm going to do is save. Um, and then I would go down here and go to... Um, hmm, Boolean. I'll turn off uh, dynamic subdivisions because the car has dynamic subdivisions. And actually, uh, if you didn't know, these cylinders also have uh, dynamic subdivisions as well. So they have a dynamic thing to make them look smoother. So you see if I turn them off, it's actually quite jagged. Turn on dynamic subdivision, smooth. Perfecto, let's move on. So uh, anyway, as I was saying, we grab to our car and we go down to boolean, we click uh, allow dynamic subdiv, and we click make boolean mesh. Now, what that's going to do, it's going to create a new mesh all the way up here in your tool palette, not your sub tool palette, your tool palette. And let's open this up, and this is what it looks like. Turn on the thing, you can see it's applied that geometry, so there's a lot more detail here. And in between where it's created these lines, it's also fixed all the in-betweens. Now, this at this point, you cannot use anymore. Um, not really. You could do a couple of things. You could either go to Ziri Modeler, um, sorry, Ziri Mesher, and you could turn on Keep Groups, lower the thing so they don't change almost at all, and you can keep the polygon size maybe half, uh, lower the adaptive size, and you could turn on Ziri Mesher. And what that's gonna do, it's going to Ziri Mesh the file with uh, the polygroups in mind. Uh, sometimes it works very well, sometimes it doesn't. The more complex the model, 
the less likely it's going to go well. <laughs> so let's see how this is going to go. Um, I don't think it's going to do a good job, but let's take a look. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so it gave us a few problems. It gave us a few problems here, and it gave us a few problems there, which isn't nice at all. But it tried. <laughs> it tried. We can even try again. It's going to do it faster this time, uh, and it's going to reduce it even more. Give it a look here. And it's going to keep trying to make it lower, but I don't like this. I'm just going to keep it as it's uh, the default. And I'm just going to take all of this as it is with all the problems and all of this. And I'm going to put it in um, Maya. I'm going to take this and put it in Maya. This is my high resolution model. This is the high res. This is what I can use for a bake or just as a starting point for a cleaner model. And I can take this and I can put it in um, Maya. So I'm going to export just this. I'm going to go down and make sure all the export options are okay. Uh, should be okay. I'm just going to use Z plugin FBX export. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. And put it C4. I'm going to read top all demo. Put it in there. Okay. And then we can move over to Maya again. I'm going to create a new scene. Uh, I'm going to put that in there. So it's my desktop. It's it's my face. Uh, Halloween costume. Ignore it. <laughs> C4. And let's find our retopo demo. Okay, so this is in here now. There's a couple of things we can do now. Now, we can go around and delete the edges we don't want. That's one thing we can do. We can select sections of the model we want to keep. Or what we can also do is we can literally click this model, click the magnet, and we can um, rebuild the geometry ourselves. So we can go to our uh, modeling toolkit and we can click quad draw and we can just start literally remodeling this um, ourselves which can be a bit of a pain. So depending on how you want to go through the next stage, you could potentially uh, simply um, remodel uh, the thing yourself using the quad draw tools um, and do it that way. That is, that is viable. You know, you can, you can do it that way if you feel comfortable that way, if you want to do it that way. Um, that's not a bad idea. You can very quickly start adding geometry and make uh, a topology which works really well for what this model is. You can edit it, you can do a lot of stuff. It sounds a little weird because you don't usually retopologize hard surface vehicles like this, but you can, especially if the vehicle is just a prop that you're going to use in your environment. You don't have to be so careful about all the things that a normal vehicle artist would be worried about. And that's pretty much it. Like, if you're an environment artist that doesn't really have any interest in vehicles but wants to kind of put in some kind of sci-fi props in your scene, or if this is just something that's giving you an interesting start for another way of modeling or another way of concepting uh, any kind of hard surface, or if this was just a nice little trick that you could use for a project that you're doing, um, I hope it was useful for that sense. Like I said, I'm not a vehicle artist. This is not the perfect way to go through and create a vehicle for a vehicle pipeline. Vehicle artists have a very specific or at least a very different process they use. But when it comes to just creating some some hard surface, a quick sci-fi uh, props to put in the background, um, this is not half bad. Especially if you know nothing about cars like me. <laughs> okay, hope this was useful and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.